grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Monday the 7th of February. The readings are transferred from Sunday and lo and behold, uh, the artwork's different here. It came to pass that Deacon Chapman and I had reason to be at San Pedro for some Society of the Holy Trinity business and decided that for all of this week, each of them will be here at San Pedro Center in Winter Park, where for the past, oh, nine, ten years, the Florida chapter has met in retreat and wanted to share the beauty of this place, specifically the chapel here. So, for the devotional reading, F.W. Borham, 1871-1959, and an interesting take on things. So, our modern evangelism is in peril of collapse at this very point. We often glorify hair breadth escapes like from the Titanic. I mean to say, we glorify guilt and belittle the preciousness of innocence. In one of his best books, Professor W. M. Clow has a fine passage on the blessedness of life which has nothing to forget. There is a tendency, he says, which hectic modern literature and morbid preaching are emphasizing to think that the man or woman who has not had a wild and wayward outburst in the days of youth is a poor, pale-blooded creature. There is a feeling that the man or woman with a dark story behind is more piquant and interesting, and that a youth of blameless innocence merging into a life of saintly purity as the dawn merges into the full day, misses the romance of life and knows nothing of any high elevation of spirit, such as he who spurns into reckless sin. There seems to be with some the impression that a rake makes the finest saint, that his devotion has a richer and deeper color than that of the unspotted soul, and that even the girl who has had a frivolous and rebellious youth shall mellow into the wisest and kindness womanhood. Surely this is one of the wiles of the devil. Of course it is. I like to think that Jesus had a place in his great heart for the woman who was a sinner and the thief on the cross by his side. I like to remember that the guiltiest things that breathed found room in his infinite love and absolution from his pure lips. But I like to remember also that it was when Jesus met the rich young ruler who had kept all the commandments from his youth up that it is written that he looking upon him loved him. Jesus never taught that the greatest escapes were the hairbreadth escapes. And the prayer. John S. B. Monsell, 1811-1875. O thou with whom is the fountain of life, and without whom we can do nothing, whose grace is sufficient for us, and whose strength is made perfect in weakness. Inspire us evermore by the fullness of thy life, that we, keeping thy commandments, may abide in thy love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.